Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial for the ST10 controller, the ST10 Plus by Unique and we're going to do a modification to it where we're going to prepare it for the Horizon FPV antenna kit. So we're going to take this guy apart and uh, install a few cables, remove the uh, built-in Wi-Fi patch antenna and what I'm doing now is I've got this guy flipped over. I'm going to use a Allen wrench. I'm not sure of the size, but uh, we're going to remove four screws that I'm pointing to here. And there are an additional two screws beneath these hand grips. So we're going to begin by removing these screws and um, keeping track of what we do. Go nice and slow so we don't break anything or disconnect any cables. And as you see here, I'm just um, removing the, one of the four screws, the uh, Allen screws. Again, I'm not sure of the size. I've got a kit there, standard and metric, and uh, one of them just happened to fit. So as we move through this, I'm going to take all these pieces and parts and uh, keep them segregated out in a method that uh, I can remember to put them back once this uh, modification has been completed. Taking the battery compartment off, I'm going to remove the battery and put it off to the side. You want to also remember that uh, without antennas, once we remove these antennas and put our, our receiving plugs in for them, you don't want to power this up until you have the uh, antennas back on the uh, transmitter. So I'm pulling these hand grips off. They come off fairly easy and I noticed that if I just curled them in a hard curl, it left all the adhesive behind. And now I'm just removing uh, the other two, or the one of the two that are beneath the hand grips, screws. So I'll do this for both of them. You'll also notice up in the top what you often you would use as a handle. There are two others that are up there that require a smaller, different size Allen wrench that I don't know that I showed in this uh, tutorial, but uh, those will need to come out also. They're up right up there in that little curved part. Um, that you would typically use as a handle where the uh, other antennas are actually at. So now I'm carefully cracking open the shell, making sure that I do it gently and in a way that uh, I don't dislodge or pull loose any ribbon cables or damage any wires that are in the side. Just take it nice and slow at this stage. Crack it open gently and you don't want to lift this top or what's the bottom here up too high because it is wired uh, definitely connected to um, some of the circuit boards on the inside and that wire the battery cable is wrapped around a post I've just uh, loosened it from its post so that uh, it will pull out of that hole on that back plate and you'll see here that I'm just looking at these uh, wires they're very tiny very delicate I'm just being real careful not to uh, stretch them or pull them loose from their solder connections and just take your time at this point and ultimately I'm going to lay this over on its side. I'm going to flip it kind of in a clamshell fashion so that um, I'm not stressing those wires that are still connected to the uh, circuit boards on the transmitter. Just take a time, take a little bit of time and look things over. Get, it, get familiar with what you're looking at in your mind for future reference. Here's a photo of the uh, Wi-Fi board. It's got three screws by default. You're going to need to take those out there, Phillips said. So uh, loosen those, you can see them. Now I've taken the three Phillips head out and I've flipped the Wi-Fi board over. And you'll see at the bottom here um, a wi uh, connection, a little pigtail connection labeled Wi-Fi. It's in the center. You can see it right there. It's got that uh, that I'm pointing to right now. We're going to pry that off. It comes off fairly easy. I just give it a little bit of tension with that screwdriver. And then I'll just flick it right off there with the rest of my uh, effort with just a pinch of the fingers. It comes off pretty easy. So this is the uh, Wi-Fi patch antenna that's built in. That's on the front. It's soldered. It's uh, actually soldered from the pigtail to that. Right there's where you see the solder connection. And the wire's uh, routed down beneath, underneath all the circuit boards, working its way back to where we just disconnected it from the uh, Q500 Plus Wi-Fi connection. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take out these Phillips screws. There are two that hold the uh, patch antenna onto the red bracket, and then afterwards 
we're going to take that red bracket off also we don't need these anymore and i'm going to keep them all and I'm, i'll just put them in a bag and keep them off to the side for later on if, if i were to sell this and maybe wanted to restore it to its factory condition or get it back uh you know get these parts back in so you'll just gently reroute this wire out once you've taken those uh two phillips screws out and pull this whole patch antenna out and set it off to the side now next what we're going to do there's a good look at that patch antenna looks fairly nice looks like a fairly nice antenna this is the kind of pigtail we're going to use got this off of ebay i got a 30 millimeter just so i have enough length to uh, have a little wiggle room and this is a close-up of it this will be the end that uh, our antennas will attach to so now we're going to go ahead and remove this red bracket that held our wi-fi patch antenna it's got two phillips screws holding it into place and um, we're just going to loosen those take that off and set it to the side all right so we've got that mounting bracket off and uh, let's get a good look at what we've got going on here remember take your time look things over so that uh, you're familiar with what you're looking at no need to get in a rush you see that uh, little fan in there that everybody talks about hearing a fan blow and that's just blowing on that wi-fi cord keeping things cool so i'm going to insert this pigtail wire and you're just going to feed that down underneath all the circuits make sure that it's uh not in anywhere where your controls your thumb controls are going to uh, end up pinching it or it's going to get in the way and cause some restrictive movement but uh, just route that through under everything and then what we're going to do is we're going to press that on that pigtail lead right back onto the Wi-Fi board right here where we took the previous one off and it's a nice little click it should be a firm connection once you press on it it should uh, be a very firm connection and shouldn't fall off on its own it almost has a swivel effect all right so we're going to flip this Wi-Fi board back over and put it into place just be real careful with those ribbon cables just keep a visual on them they're they're not super delicate, but I can see where if you uh, stressed on uh, the board pulling it a little bit, they might come loose. So I'm just going to line the uh, corner holes with the posts that the screws go back in. I'm going to go ahead and put the screws back in the board, the Wi-Fi board, just to secure it down so that I don't have to worry about um, any ribbon cables coming loose or uh, causing any potential damage to that uh, Wi-Fi board. So remember, there's there's spots for four screws but by default it comes with three and the uh, bottom right is the one in my case that was absent so as i march through these making sure that i'm getting them in not cross threading anything making them nice and snug without over tightening don't want to risk damaging any of the pcbs and then uh, the other end of the pigtail i'm just going to hang that over the end and um We'll keep on going where we're going to go. I'm just going to pull, like, like I said, I got a little extra on the wire just so that I've got some room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it over here and I just looped it back behind these plastic stubs. Uh, just kind of routed it out of the way. And uh, then I'll flop that uh, pigtail, that antenna connection. Here what I'm going to do is pull off one of the transmitter wires. We've got two. I'm going to pull off one. They call this the uh, crowded side. Now I'm not going to remove it. I'm going to leave it in the transmitter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some tape. And I'm going to tape off that end so that there's no potential for shorting. So that in the future, like I said, that if I need to put this back together and restore it to its original condition, I can do that. Here's the other one. This is the one we're going to leave. That's going to help facilitate giving us a signal in close. In close uh, around us. All right, so... Here I am putting the tape on that just to keep it secure. Just again, make sure that there's no potential for this to short out. And then I'm going to just kind of tuck that in, put a loop in it and tuck it in down there beneath uh, the circuit boards and just kind of out of the way where it's not in a bind or pinched or uh, any potential for shorting or causing any other problem. So that's out of the way. And let me flop this guy back up here all right now what we're going to do is we're going to take our other pigtail and this is the area where we're going to be drilling holes and mounting now, i've got me some uh avery labels that i've just written the frequencies on the 5.8 and 2.4 
rather than writing them down, marking them up with a Sharpie, I've just written them on here. I'm going to apply these into position just as a visual reference for me to know um, know what I'm doing. And maybe if somebody else, maybe if somebody else ends up with this, they'll see the frequency and have a, a better understanding uh, down the road if they take ownership of this. So I'm just putting some decals on here and in an area where I'm not going to be drilling. So we're going to take our other pigtail lead. Um, but first, let's go ahead and mark these. I'm going to mark them. You'll see there's uh, somewhat of a crease in this plastic, and I'm putting my mark right on that crease. It's not very visual in this uh, footage, but if you see it uh, in, in real, real, real time, it'll make sense to you. You'll see just a little bit of a groove there. So I'm marking them just like you see. Make sure that they're not going to touch those uh, groove supports. And first, I'm going to drill this with a, a tiny pilot hole. And take your time. You don't want your drill to spin on your circuit board and tear something up. So I was making sure to keep that uh, portion of the drill that's spinning off that circuit board. So I did one, and then I'm going to do the other. And then once I've got some holes, I'm going to actually come back around on the outside of the transmitter and drill from the outside in to the proper dimension to insert my uh, antenna lead. So there I am cleaning it up and here I am going to drill from the outside again nice and slow nice and steady and you can do this in incremental bit sizes if you like it's completely up to you you just don't want to drill so big that you crack it take it again nice and slow don't let that drill bit run into your circuit boards and so we've got the 5.8 done and we're going to work on that 2.4 and I wallered them out a little bit after I got through came back and forth on them a time or two just to make sure. At this point, I'm going to take the, uh, the lock nuts and nut off and insert these. Make Again, make sure that you're going from your Wi-Fi to the proper hole and then from your uh, transmitter to the proper hole, the 2.4 and 5.8. I just snug these up good and snug by hand. Didn't put any tools on them. I've got a pretty good grip, so I just wrench down on them with my fingertips. And I'm getting a 2.4 going here. And once we get that down, we'll move over to that 5.8 and uh, ratchet down on it. But before we do, we're going to need to take this pigtail and we're going to press it down where we just removed the previous portion of the two earlier. And it's going to be the 5.8 coming off of that uh, transmitter. So with a little finesse, you can easily line that up and get a good press, snap, click, and it'll be locked into place. And you'll tell that it's locked because you'll be able to swivel it. See how I swivel it there? And uh, what I did here is I just put a loop or two in this and then tidied it up, tucked it down beneath the uh, circuitry, and then uh, fed that fitting through that 5.8 hole that I just made. Again, trying to keep it clean, trying to keep it neat, trying to keep it in a way that in the future, if I need to reverse all this, it'll be easy to do for myself and uh, maybe someone else that may end up with this in the future. It'll all make sense to them. So again, no tools, no wrenches put on this. I just snugged it down with my bare grip. So uh, I do lots of, lots of work with my hands, so I got a pretty good grip with them little pincher fingers I got going on. So there's what it looks like, the 5.8 and 2.4 mounted from the inside. Again, take your time, look things over, make sure you've not locked, knocked loose any connections or uh, pulled loose any leads. Just take your time, give it a nice look over, verify everything's in place. There's nothing going to be in a bind or in a pinch. So everything's looking good. I'm confident and we're going to put the lid back on it. Here's what it looks like from the front, on the outside. You can see we've got our, uh, both our leads ready to receive antennas in the future. So again, I'm just tucking my wires, getting ready to close this sucker up, moving my wires, routing them so that they're, again, in a good spot where there's going to be no interference and no pinching or anything. Just, again, once over, just checking it out, verifying before I put the lid on this guy. You want to make sure that everything's A-OK -okay before you button her up. And as I close this back, if you look on the bottom left of the uh, transmitter, I'll point to it here in just a second, there is a speaker 
down there. I'm pointing to it right now, this little red speaker. It's got a little semicircle recession that it should fit in. Make sure that that's in there before you put this lid on. So uh, adjust your uh, camera and uh, your, your rabbit and uh, your different uh, speed ratio levers there. Get them positioned in the center and that, that clamshell back will slide right down on it. All right, now we're going to button her up. We've got the, uh, basically it's just a reverse of what we did in the beginning. We're going to hit these four corners and we'll march our way through all the uh, Allen um, screws. And then we'll get make sure we get those two up in the top, up in that handle thing. And then the two that are beneath the hand grips. And I'm tightening them down again, finger tight, and with a little, you know, enough that uh, you know they're not going to fall out. And not so much that you're going to risk stripping plastic or, or cracking anything. And so we're about to get this buttoned up. And it's fairly easy modification. Um, I'd say in real time, if I weren't filming this, I could have done it in 30 minutes. So this video looks like it's going to be about 18 minutes. And of course it's edited and I had to move the camera around and, and take pictures and whatnot. But uh, these are the smaller screws that go up in the uh, handle area. Where earlier I said they go, but I don't know that I videotaped them coming out. But there are two. And uh, make sure they take a different size Allen wrench and um, they're tiny so make sure you've got uh, the proper tools to be able to do this you don't need much you need a little Phillips screwdriver two allen wrenches a uh, drill and a couple of bits so just take your time again make sure that you've got everything buttoned up right that you on your shell of your transmitter uh, it did clamp together properly that there's not a gap or a wire hanging out that uh, may be pinched or in a bind and here I'll get uh, getting my battery lead back through here and remember I'm gonna wrap it back around that pole it's just a pole to take the tension off so that uh, you know there's no risk pulling that loose in there by maybe a battery dangling and snatching that loose from the circuit board inside so you can see that post and here I'm going to put these grips back on they're a little bit tricky in this video it looks uh, simpler than it really was but you've basically got three stubs that press down in these holes and then the adhesive holds them the rest of the way I found that if you just lick them little rubber stubs, they pop right on in there. If you get them wet, they pop right in much better than they do if they're dry. And once we get this guy all buttoned up, got to look at it here. And again, make sure that you've got good movement on all your, your levers there. And once again, this is uh, the mod that is preparing this for external antennas. And I'm going to be placing the Horizon... Um, Horizon Antennas uh, FPV uh, kit on there and uh, they provide for the uh, the longer range both on the Wi-Fi and the uh, range and this is also suitable for the Sunhans um, booster kit if you wanted to go that route too so it's a fairly easy mod like I said and I hope that this made sense to you guys that have an interest in it I know there's a lot of confusing parts and components and uh, I hope you find this interesting and uh, useful and there you have it. She's back together and ready for the antennas. I've got those ordered. And so when I receive them, I'll do another video to show you those. Bye-bye now.